What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex. This is As The Cheese Gaming. So in today's video, I was talking to some friends the other day in the Retro Collective Discord. Break Cooper guys. And one of them mentioned that he was kind of a novice or beginner when it comes to the realm of RPGs. So I got to thinking, you know what? What would be some good beginner friendly games if you've never really played an RPG game in your life? So I went through my collection, pulled out a bunch of games. Now real quick before we begin, I want to give an honorable mention to these two back here. These games are not RPGs, but they do have RPG elements. And I think both of them are well worth picking up and playing today. So we got the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the GameCube. And then Epic Mickey, which also has a sequel, both on the Wii. So, like I said, they both have RPG elements, but they're not full-blown RPGs. So, just wanted to mention these. I don't know, maybe this might even be a good gateway. Anyway, we're going to jump right in. We're going to start off with the Super Nintendo. First game I got for you. Shout out to SNES Drunk, who's talked about this game many a times. He calls this one kind of baby's first RPG in his Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. So we got a special clear label that someone gifted me a while back. Shout out to them. They know who they are. Now, I have been sitting down playing this one recently, so so far I really enjoy it. It's pretty simplified. It's nowhere near as massive as some of the other RPGs. As a kid, I missed out on the GARPG scene. So this one's been kind of fun to get into. And again, if you're brand new to the genre, not so sure you want to go sit down and try to play something like Final Fantasy VI or Seventh Saga or Earthbound. Like, that just may be too much of an undertaking. So next, let's jump over to the Nintendo 64. Now, oddly enough, I actually completely missed out on RPGs for the Nintendo 64. And one of the ones that actually I don't have any in my collection except for this one, which I have complete in box. And let me just say, if you're a novice to the RPG scene, this one's really easy to pick up and play. Four player compatible, doesn't take you long at all to figure out the controls. Great hack and slash action. Pretty simple to figure out the upgrades for it, so can't go wrong with this one. Of course, based off the arcade game, there's also a Gauntlet, I think it's called Gauntlet Legends for the GameCube. So if you don't have a Nintendo 64 but you have a GameCube, that might be one to look up. So let's continue right along here. Next, we're going to move over to the OG Xbox. And one that I am just absolutely love. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this game before. I mean, by the time you get to the end of the game, you're just so overpowered. You could just wail on every single thing in your path. Fantastic game. Fantastic visuals. They also remastered this game for the Xbox 360. Which actually, hold on, I can pull that one out from back there in the collection for you. Give me just a moment here. Apologies, everyone. Got some technical difficulties here. There we go. Fable Anniversaries for the Xbox 360. And then this is, of course, original Fable Lost Chapters. So if you're newer to the RPG genre, highly recommend both of these for the OG Xbox and Xbox 360, respectively. Now, I did pull two games for the Xbox 360, so we'll go into those right now. First one, Final Fantasy 2. Final Fantasy 13 2, excuse me. This one, if you've ever played any of the Pokemon games, this one's a lot like those. And honestly, when I first started playing this one, yeah, it's be pretty fun. The story's kind of weak, but I really enjoyed it. And there's a lot of areas where you can just like grind like crazy for experience. Pretty. So, again, well worth it. I think it's pretty beginner friendly. And now here's one that I want to talk about next, which is this game is Diablo 3, which is also for the PlayStation 3. And then you have the later version with all the DLC for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So this game's on a whole bunch of consoles. Dungeon crawler, hack and slash action. Pick your, you know, character, however you want to build them. Obviously I don't have the manual here, but have the game. 
This one's on a whole bunch of systems. I believe it to be very beginner friendly. Show you guys the back right there. And again, like I said, it's on a whole bunch of systems. So, and I also believe it's well worth picking up and playing today. And actually Diablo 4 is soon to come out, I believe on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Speaking of Xbox, let's move to the Xbox One. We'll pick out one that I think is pretty beginner friendly, and that is ReCore. This one is more of a third-person shooter RPG, but pretty fun. Plenty of upgrades that you can get. You're just kind of by yourself in this arid wasteland desert. Pretty easy to figure out, pick up the controls for it. And it's actually stayed a very relatively cheap title. I think you can find this one for like less than 15 bucks at your local game store or wherever. Obviously, as you can see here, I got it for myself for 10 bucks on GameStop. So we'll continue on. Next, we're going to move over to the PlayStation 4, the final two I got for you. These two, you can kind of combine them together because they're actually both originally Super Nintendo remakes. That is Trials of Mana, which is Sikand and Setsu 3. And then Secret of Mana, obviously Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo, got a facelift. So I think this one's a little bit more novice friendly just because the controls are a little bit better and the hit detection's a lot better. But both pretty simple pick up and play style games. Choose your character, whatever you want it to be and get started. So if you have any suggestions or games you believe that are beginner friendly, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, everybody.